So in this video, we're going to be continuing our conversation about custom web publishing driven web pages. So we're talking about web pages that are designed for public access somehow to your FileMaker application, whether it's limited access or customers can log on and see the status of their projects or they can register with you for more information, whatever it is as a business owner or someone who works in a business or maybe even within a government or educational organization, you're going to see all sorts of practical applications for what we're talking about. So in this demo, I'm going to dive into this middle uh, example here. So this, in terms of complexity, this is really our low complexity, our mid complexity, and this is really our more higher complexity. I'm not going to really explain the simple one or the high one. The simple one we're going to cover already when we cover the middle one and the high one. You really need to get a senior developer to go through that and show you how to do that or go through the training on that because it's really beyond the basics of PHP. We're talking about all sorts of additional technology that makes it visually awesome. We're talking about JavaScript with jQuery, with Bootstrap, or maybe using Angular or something like that. There's all sorts of technologies that are out there that allow you to make rich, robust web pages beyond the basics. But today we're just talking about the basics. So as I go through this page right here, and once again, as a reminder, this is the page that we can put information in and it submits it into our sample FileMaker file. And if I leave something out, it notates the fact that we haven't completed it successfully. So if I go through here and I just say, I make this all uh, AAA, uh, BBB, CCC, DDD, E, H, I, and then I bring up uh, FileMaker. So if I go ahead and submit, notice up here at the top, as I bring this page up, I submit, that number will go up because we did submit and almost instantaneously it updated to the server and then we get an update here that the information was submitted. So here we go. So we see all that. So we want to walk through this code and while I'm doing it, I'm going to be explaining you the corresponding processes on this side of things. So I'm going to actually log into our FileMaker uh, server. I'm going to do a screen share. I'm going to actually look at the pages on the server. Most people will build the pages locally on their own computer and then upload them back and forth with SSH or FTP or something like that. So they move the files up and down. So I'm looking at the htdocs directory here that's part of a FileMaker server installation. Here is the very simple basic or low end page. And this is the uh, intermediate page right here. This is the intermediate one and we broken it down into two files to make it easily understandable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and bring this up. So we're looking at the page with the form. Now notice that there is HTML in here. For those of you who played with HTML, you'll start to recognize some of this, but then you'll see stuff like this and you'll be like, ah, confused. So what's important to understand is that this page largely is to display the information, to wrap it up, and to shoot it back to the web server. So once again, we're back to that diagram. So the web browser submits it back to the web server, and it's going to review it to see if it's complete enough to send off to the web publishing engine, which again is our invisible FileMaker client, kind of like an invisible copy of Pro. We talked about that a great deal in the last video. So. Uh, what you're going to see right here is the sample code for this. Now, it's important to understand as we go through this that there are going to be some code jockeys or some serious developers who've been doing this for years, and they're going to raise their hand and say, well, I can do that 10 times more efficiently. We actually have gone out of our way to make this code as basic as possible for instructional purposes. It works just fine. You can use the code yourself. It's free for you to adapt and use it. Understand like anything in FileMaker, especially in the world of PHP and all these other coding languages, there is probably a dozen or more different ways to do any one thing. So I'm showing you one method. We have actually gone through and actually rebuilt this a couple times to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. So this page at this point is a page that lives on the web server. The web browser requested it. As of this point, you're filling the information out on screen and you have not in any way interacted with the FileMaker server yet. So once again, we have the first name, last name, uh, city state, we have a pop-up list right here. 
But once again, we're putting information in here so that the contents of this get wrapped up and pushed through the form to the PHP response page. And so once again, I'm going to come down here to the end. I'm scrolling down. And this is the end of the page. Very simple in the scheme of things, right? To add additional fields is very simple. And so the whole idea of this page is that once you submit, there's a button at the bottom that says register. So if I want to change the, the name to something else, I could change the text right here. It takes all the text that we have submitted and shoots it back to the web server and says, please evaluate this with this page right here called Index Plane Handler. Now the team that was building this decided to call it Handler because it's in their mind it's handling the PHP, reviewing it, and then deciding whether to send it forward to the web publishing engine for action on the FileMaker server. So I'm going to come back here, it submits it, and it shoots it forward to here. Now this page largely, for the most part, is just PHP. There's very little HTML. Now understand, once again, a PHP, an HTML page, an XML page, all these pages, all they are are text files. It's a text file with text in it. There's nothing magical about it. It's just plain text. All this coloring that you see in here is not part of the file. This is part of the Text Wrangler application. Other people use other tools. We're going to have a short video later on about the tools that people are choosing to use to do coding or editing. The other folks on my team are using Visual Studio Code on Mac. So some of my staff said they use an app called NetBeans. There's another one called Atom. There's all sorts of applications that are out there. This right here is a screenshot from the Visual Studio Code application. And this one, of course, was running on the Mac. Notice things are color coded because the application chooses to color code them because it can see the different sections within the code. Obviously in this screenshot, all the comments are in green, right? And so you start to see that uh, differentiation, which is pretty nice. And you've started to see that, of course, with Script Workspace in the FileMaker platform. That's where they got this from. They didn't invent that. <laughs> this is stuff that's already been in the industry. So. The response page here is the index plane handler. In short, it grabs the data that's been submitted from the previous page, all those forms. It evaluates them to make sure they are not empty. So this is the process right here where it evaluates. In fact, from here, this if statement here to the else is checking to see if the validation has been completed. If the validation is completed, it wraps it up and activates the FileMaker PHP API which is part of the FileMaker platform. Additionally, because as you remember, we're activating this invisible FileMaker client, kind of like an invisible copy of Pro, what does it need? It needs the database name, the IP address of the database, a username, and a password, just to start. That's the minimum it needs to start with. And so of course we have all that wrapped up in this line right here. Then we have the next line, which is relevant right here, which is specifying the add command and to go to this layout to do it. So what it's going to do, it's going to go to L56, which is a special layout that we created in FM Starting Point. If I go to FM Starting Point, I can go in here. There's nothing special about this layout. In fact, it's extraordinarily basic. In fact, here it is right here. All it is is a plain text layout. It doesn't need to have any elements or artwork or anything on it. In fact, the more that you junk up this layout with the relevant things, the slower it takes that invisible client to review it and interact with it. So you want this page to be as light and as fast as possible. You don't want summary fields on here. You generally don't want unstored calculations on here. This gets back into performance tuning. We talk about that in other videos in our FileMaker Pro course, but it's once again those rules that you learn in FileMaker. Well, remember, we're talking to an invisible FileMaker client. That's why I call it this, because all the rules that we learned in performance tuning for FileMaker Pro, well, they're all the same right here. It's the same thing. People expect web pages to be fast. Whenever someone goes to Facebook or some website and they can't get it instantaneously, they grumble, they whine, they say that you suck as a developer. And that's not any fun. And so as a result, <laughs> as a result, you want to make your stuff as fast as possible. So all those performance videos that we talk about, I'm going to put a link here at the bottom. Go watch them, make sure you understand them. So this is the page that the 
web publishing engine, aka Invisible FileMaker client, is going to talk to. Then we take all that information that we passed forward from the last page. Remember, we're on the response page, right? This is the page we fill the information out, we submit, and it launches this page here. It's going to go through the process of submitting that data into these fields. These fields, of course, match here, okay? If these fields are not on here, either you will be missing data or you'll get a weird error message. Lastly, we can also call a script. This script will execute and complete before this page resumes. In the case of our demo, we're not actually doing anything in the script, but if I bring up the script workspace, I can go down here, down to this folder down here, and bring up this script here. There's no code in here, but this is where we would put code that checks to see if maybe the person's already in the database, maybe they submitted twice, maybe we already know about them, and they're fine, or whatever the issue is, whatever you can do with scripts, you put it in here. So pretty cool stuff. So once again, we tell it the database, the security, the layout. So all the normal kind of stuff. Now keep in mind, if we code the code here to look for this layout, and then we decide to change the name of the layout over here, that will break this page. It will be totally inoperative. So normally in FileMaker, FileMaker is really rich and smart that if you change a script name or a field name, it kind of keeps everything connected. It's smart about that. Well, as soon as you start dealing with the deep end of the pool, once again, this is why this is basically for more senior type people, as soon as you change something on one end, if you don't keep track of that change yourself, your web page and your interaction with FileMaker will break. It will quit working. And so that's one of the most common things people say, oh, it quit working. I say, well, did you mess with the layouts that I said not to mess with? And they go, well, yeah, I changed the name and I moved it around. Well, moving it around is not a problem, but changing the name or removing the fields that are on it, et cetera, can cause the process to break down. So you're gonna have layouts in FileMaker that you don't wanna touch. So you wanna give them a name up front. In our case, we call it you know, PHP. And sometimes we put them in folders that say, do not touch these for any reason. Otherwise, you're gonna break your application. So we set the layout, we're gonna set these fields, we're gonna call this script, and right here we say execute, go do it. And then the results we're gonna get back in this variable. Notice once again that PHP is using a variable syntax similar to what we have in FileMaker. These are variables. In fact, the if statements here are somewhat similar, right? So if you've been learning FileMaker, like here's an if statement, if, right? Now the syntax is a little different, the brackets are a little different than FileMaker, but you can learn that, it's not the end of the world. And then you have an else, and then probably somewhere there's an end if somewhere. And it's right down here. I think it's actually a bracket. And so uh, they don't actually have an end if, they have a bracket that closes out the if statement. Pretty straightforward. So at this point right here, this page kind of takes a pause and it shoots the block of data, this information here, it shoots it to the web publishing engine, AKA our invisible FileMaker client. And then we get the results back. And if the results are positive, then we can generate a positive message. And that's what we do right here. We check to see if we get an error message. If there's no error message, then we actually put a little bit of HTML on the page and saying, hey, you're good to go right here. Now, one thing I didn't cover back here and I should have mentioned, and that is if during this early check, before we ever got down here, if it failed to check, it sends the person back to the first page. And so I should have mentioned this in order, but it does this check right here. If it fails the check, it launches us and sends us back to the first page, which is over here, and says, do it again, right? Because you were missing stuff. So that's kind of why we built this in two pages so people would understand. So if it fails, we send the user back to the first page, they resubmit again, and then as they submit, it runs this check again. If it passes, then we move forward with the process of shooting the information to the web publishing engine. The web publishing engine on its own is communicating the FileMaker server. We don't have to worry about that. All we have to do is make sure we pass the credentials. Now, important to note, PHP and PHP are not the most secure username and password. These are actually username and passwords that are in our FileMaker solution. So if I go here to our FileMaker solution, and I come over here to this page and I say manage security. 
you'll see that some people have access in here. I got uh, Todd Geis has access in here. Jesse Barnum has access in here. They've been uh, playing around with this off and on. And then we have this PHP account right here, which has limited access. This PHP account doesn't need administrative access. We've given it a custom privilege set with limited access to only the contacts table. Now this also brings up something else, that there is an extended privilege that allows PHP pages to call an account. Of course, this extended privilege, if I go over here, we can see that it's called FMPHP. So if you want to have a user access that with the PHP engine through PHP, which all is going through the custom web publishing engine, but the custom web publishing engine can talk through PHP, it can talk through XML. It actually talks through REST now, the REST API, which is this one right here. So there's really three options for interacting through custom web publishing CWP. And that's once again a FileMaker specific acronym. So you have these three technologies, at least the ones that we commonly use. Now it's kind of a long video, but that covers the interaction and walking through this page. So feel free to download this page and try to get it going on your copy of FM Starting Point or your own database. It's not really specific to Starting Point, it's a very simple example. If you need assistance and help getting this set up, feel free to contact us at support at RC Consulting. We can either help train you on this or we can actually help get this built for you as necessary. Or if you have a qualified local FileMaker developer and you want to work with them, that's great. Any senior FileMaker developer that is, frankly, certified should be able to do this. If they are calling themselves a senior developer and they can't do this, then they're probably not really a senior developer. In the scheme of things, this is pretty much low-hanging fruit. The senior developers that I have that help build this sample are way above this in terms of their capability. They're frequently building the very fancy pages that you saw earlier when I was demoing them in the green and the red and the color coding and things like that. So however, I brought this down to an entry level position. So if you want to learn about PHP, this is a good place to start. In a future video, I'm going to have an interview with one of my developers and talk to them about the resources they use to help learn this technology. Now as a wrap up to this video, I want to point out that FileMaker has published a couple of white papers, uh, PDFs that talk about custom web publishing. So here is the custom web publishing guide. This is for the latest release of FileMaker as of the current time. Uh, understand that there's all sorts of sections in here that talk about the XML publishing. Then there is sections that talk about the PHP publishing. In this release right now, which is the 16 release, the conversation pretty much resides or revolves around the XML and then a little bit later on they start the PHP conversation in here down towards the bottom. A lot of the information I gave you in this video has is kind of covered in here in somewhat different terms. However, this goes into much greater detail about all the commands you can call. Like for example, I said you can edit, delete, read data. Our sample here is simply creating a record and not looking into the database itself. So that's also part of this. So once again, uh, you're going to see things that I've talked about in this document. You're going to see a lot more in-depth information. So I highly recommend that you check out a copy of the Custom Web Publishing Guide from FileMaker Incorporated. So very good information here. But if you're trying to learn this for the first time, it's a little bit on the deep end. Just keep that in mind. But for now, I'm Richard Carlton. I'll see you next week.